I didn't get no sleep last night. I've been staying up all night just thinking about this alligator. This gator here gave me cold chills. He, he got away with everything. He took my treble hook and everything. And he never come back up. I don't know, it was like a ghost I was holding with. He just disappeared. I don't know how big he was, but going by where he pulled, he's a monster. Here in the swamp, people would call him Kud, Gugga, Mugga, a big alligator that you very rare see. Until the last day and the last minute and the last hour on alligator season, me and him still got a meeting to go to, and it's either me or him. And this gate is big, and I'm going to catch him. Day six of alligator hunting season, and on the bayous of southern Louisiana, the Edgar family, Daniel, son Joey, and grandson Dorian, are preparing to do battle with an old foe. Grunois, he's been living in that cove for a long time. Even the neighboring fishermen and everyone always talked about, man, I saw this gator longer than the boat. And then one day, I saw him. And I just couldn't believe how big he was. He saw my mind all the time, every year when I'm fishing. This year, I decided we're going to go get him. The boys set off for a backwater canal known to be Grand Noir's territory. We've been trying to kill Grand Noir for about 10 years, and uh, Dad and I got close to him twice. But he disappeared on us. My dad, once he uh, makes his mind up to do something, his reverse gear is broken. He's not going to back up. He's going to see that mission through until it's done. And it's not long before they pick up the monster's trail. Take a look at his slide, yeah? A big alligator right here, y'all. The giants in here? <laughs> I got two slides. Oh, why don't you put it on that tree? Look at Paul. Look at the size of his foot. Look at here. Oh, he's a giant. Man, Lord have mercy. I've got pretty big hands. 25% of his foot is my hand. And I'm looking at this thing, and I'm saying, whoa, that's an alligator. They should pay us just for the foot on that alligator. Just this track is worth money. He looks prehistoric. Maybe some off of Jurassic Park. To wrangle a monster this size, Daniel needs to set a line that's extra secure. When you're tying for a real big one, look, go around the tree two times. He can't do nothing with that, I promise you. He go, he go give it hell, but he can't do nothing with that. Well, they got some gators right here. As the Edgars continue to stalk their prize. Sixty-seven miles away, in Bayou Black, Frenchie and G are on a mission of their own. Uh, what's wrong, bro? You get no, you get no rest? No. Dreaming all night? Hey, I hey. Alligator around my pillow, and I knew it was gonna be a rough night. I saw an alligator earlier this season that I was starting to have dreams about. Just looking at the size of the head, I knew he was huge. I thought that this one would make a record. He was an A1 trophy. I had alligator dancing all night long, sure. Around my head and around my pillow, sure. It's time to put it to rest. I'm trying to see what you're going to feed your dream gator. Mm -hmm. 
tuna got there. I'm tuna and uh, beef milk. Chicken. You putting three different baits on there? Yep. Frenchy's convinced his triple bait buffet is the lure that'll finally bring him his dream gator. Just mixing it all up. You have a little bit of everything. They will have something that he, hopefully he will like. Then to top it all, a little salt and pepper, special. Uh, it's a special sauce, it's a fish oil, and chicken oil, uh, and beef oil. Uh. Like you say, you got a little everything right there. So hopefully I can catch him. Right here, he got the whole buffet. That's the best Happy Meal he could possibly have. Yeah, I, I'm just brain dead, uh, thinking one thing, <laughs> all about that dream gator. As Frenchie and G chase the elusive predator, 65 miles north in Bayou Sorrel, Willie Edwards is on the hunt, solo. The best alligator hunter is my dad, Jim Edwards. Been helping him fill his tags for a long time. But this season, I got some tags of my own, and I'm trying to make a name for myself. This year, you know, I got a dozen tags to fill. It ain't that many, so I got to put a big alligators on each tag. To increase his chances of bagging big ones, Willie will use his signature hunting method. Rather than hanging lines with bait, he'll catch them with his treble hook. The old treble hook, call him Old Faithful. You can hang a hook over the by and everything, and you catch him on that hook. But certain big ones that don't bite hooks, you've got to catch them with a treble hook. Knowing the monsters stir up methane gas as they crawl on the bottom, he's on the lookout for telltale bubbles. That big old thing. Looks like a pretty good size. Boy, boy, boy. I was born and raised in it. I know what they do and know what the bubble, kind of bubbles I'm looking for. And now, you get a big alligator, he gonna make a trail six, seven foot long. And the bigger your bubbles are, the bigger your alligator. Now, you gonna have to think that's a big old gator. Once you grab that treble hook, that's when the adrenaline rush starts. As Willie drags his treble hook through the water, he's hoping to snag the gator's body. Oh, man. Yes, him. Out away from them lilies. Yeah, we just can't let him get to the lilies. That's what he's trying to do. As soon as they get underneath them lilies, that's it. You can count them gone. Man. I see a big old alligator right here. That's a good one. Hunting by yourself is dangerous. You got a lot of things can go wrong real quick. And once you get him hooked and get him up on the side of the boat, you can grab you by the arm or you can slip and fall right into it. It's just dangerous. Sorrel. Willie Edwards has a mammoth gator squarely in his sights. Oh, yeah. Got a 
got a big one, boy. We got a big one. Rope going. Oh, he lost it. Took the whole thing and everything. That's a big one. Cool. The powerful monster has ripped the line right out of Willie's hands. God. He, like, tore my hand off. Some, uh, full big white chunks in my hand. And that was the first one ever took the hook from him. Dude got the mitt, and he was pulling inside the boat under. It was, it was about to go. He had me scared. Just nothing like I ever seen before. Got 75 foot of rope on my hook. He run that out like in a matter of two or three seconds. He's 13 and a half, maybe 14 foot. That thing's big. Big, big. That was game over from there. He never come back up. I don't know, it was like a ghost I was holding with. He just disappeared like a needle in a haystack. Man, that's messed up, boy. As Willie contemplates his next move, 75 miles south in Homa, RJ and J. Paul Molinaire have been raking in the gators this season. I see it hanging, Jay. Yeah. But today, RJ's having a hard time keeping pace. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's good. Cut my finger. And you get cuts and you get stuck by hooks all day long, you know? I got all kinds of little cuts on my hand. I got stuck with a hook there. I got rope burns. But this cut is really getting bad. It was a little cut, and it just overnight just blew up. So that got my attention quick. With tons of bacteria on the boat from the rotting bait and gators, a small cut can easily get a nasty infection. Every time I grab a string, I got I to gotta watch what hand I grab. Your finger's bothering you? Yeah, my finger's bothering me, man. It's starting to pound a little bit. It's down there, bro. Oh, watch yourself. No, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got some weight on him. Yeah. Dang it. Hey, man, watch your hand. Watch your hand. Get the gun ready, Jay. Uh-oh, that's not good. Ah, the hand burn on, dude. Ah. You'll pop the line quick, bro. Ready, ready, ready. Ooh. Yeah, you're right, baby. Right now, Dad's hands are to the point where a couple of fingers are, are swollen, all infected, and it hurts. As long as we get that infection out, we'll be good, he'll be ready to rock and roll. Uh, teamwork, man, that's what I'm talking about. As the boys keep an eye on RJ's swollen finger, <laughs> 78 miles to the northwest, the Edgars are stalking Grand Noir a massive gator that has eluded them for years. I hadn't caught him yet, and he's been here, so he's smart. He's been out slicking me all these years. Obsessed with catching the beast this season, Daniel has a special strategy in mind, a live fish and a fish head. Asian corp, come get some of that, big boy. Look what he baited with. <laughs> Y'all feed them the American food, I'm gonna feed them Asian food. We'll see who's gonna catch him tomorrow. I got a buffet, Asian buffet, Paul. Your head might work, but your live fish, he's got to kill him before he swallow it. And to kill him, he's gonna feel the hook. That's right. I'm telling you, a fish that size ain't gonna be any killing or nothing. That size, gonna take him right there. We gonna see. Tell him to learn something from his papa. Dad acts like he doesn't hear you when you try to tell him better, or you know, you give him advice. Uh, he doesn't want to hear it. Once Dad sets his mind, he's not gonna turn around. Everybody knows him knows that. There's no way I'll catch a small one with that. That's a five-pound bait for a 500-pound alligator. That'll work any day of the week. As they make their way up the canal, Daniel spies more evidence that the monster is close. There's his road. Go. He's going in that hole. Look at the size of that alligator. 
Go. That's a jump. I'm gonna go around and see if I can get in that hole. I'm telling you, when I have a mission, I love the challenge of the hood. It's been 15 years. I really want this alligator. He's big. He's 12 plus, maybe 14. I mean, he's big. His head is 36 inches long, and the way it looks, he's a big one. There he is. Daniel's instincts are paying off as he spots his prey in the pond. Your pride's on the line, you know, and my son and my grandson's watching me. You know, uh, I gotta get him. The senior Edgar doesn't want to scare Grand Noir away, so to keep his distance, he's attached a small treble hook to a fishing rod. I've been after this alligator 15 years. I've seen him a bunch of times just like that and can't get him. Come on, big boy. I don't think he moved. That's the smartest damn alligator. I'm really fired up right now. Can't believe that I can't get this alligator. I'm just, at this point, this alligator's just getting away from me and I have to get him. It's a tough moment. It's a tough moment. He's gone. Mm -hmm. God, don't. It's the sixth day of alligator hunting season, and in Bayou Sorrel, Willie is stalking the beast that took his line and trusted treble hook. Never happened before in my life. I ain't out and fall a lot of them, a lot of big ones, too. I done caught a 13 footer. Never pulled like that. And he took it like, like it wasn't nothing. A lifetime on the bayou has provided Willie with a big bag of tricks for outsmarting giant gators. Alligator's territory, he gonna stay in the same spot you see him in. You take your motor and you back up into the treetop and you rib it up and wash out all the little treetops because that's where they like to hide it. He feels that pressure against him, that mud washing all up against him, and he hears that motor vibrate, he comes on out. And once he get up and move, he gonna make bubbles, and that, that's where he done messed up at. Just sit here and wait till he comes up. Now, I had my hopes up. I mean, I knew, I'm pretty sure I thought I was gonna catch a big one back then, but uh, I don't give up. While Willie continues his quest to bag his monster, 75 miles away, the Edgars are also in hot pursuit. Having just missed snagging the gator they call Grand Noir, they're heading to the beast's remote lair where they set lines this morning. Coming to the back of this canal where Grand Noir lives, hopefully we'll have him on the line or maybe we can catch him with the drag hook this morning. Since I was seven years old, my grandpa's been hunting this alligator. It has us worried sometimes, because, you know, he's old. He's an old timer. And uh, we don't want the swamp to finish him off out there. You know, we'll never be able to live with ourselves if that ever happened. Might have this alligator. Hey, you know what caught him, huh? A piece of Asian carp. I got him. I just seen him sunk. How big? I couldn't tell. No, look, he's right there. Look his head. We got Grand Noir on the line. I hope my hog knot's tied. Look oh. at the size of this rascal. Don't let him go in that stump. Uh-oh. The boat's not going to turn. Don't let him get in that stump. Yeah. Get him, Paul. That's Grand Noir. That's him right there. That's why I came to this hole. 
Whoa, watch it. Whoa, he bit my back. I'll try to get a shot. Put your gun close to his head. Close, close to his head. Shoot him. Oh, shoot him. Whoa, when I tell you, shoot him, shoot him this time. Don't hesitate. Shoot him right now. Good job, Paul. <laughs> hey, Grab him under his front. Watch. Look at the size of this rascal. Yeah, this is real. Like turning. All right. Go, he's been fighting. Look the scars on. I can't Look at here where a big one did it. Oh my God! Wait there. Let's go. Lord have mercy. Look, look a here. Look at this. No. He's been fighting. Watch. Roll him over. This is not going well. I'm telling you, look a here. Look the tooth mark. Look at this. Go. Go. Let me see what you're Fighting with the big one. Once we pulled him on the boat and looked at him, investigated him, he had been fighting with a really big alligator. He had teeth marks on the back of his head and under his throat. A really big alligator bit him, and uh, I'm thinking that there may be a bigger alligator in there. Hunt's never over. My eyes are still looking for him right now. Let's go to the next line. I love it. <laughs> this is what we live for. While this 10-footer will earn close to $300 at the buyer, the Edgars still have their sights on Grand Noir. Back on Bayou Black, Frenchie and G are coming up empty as they stalk Frenchie's dream gator. When you see one big one that you don't never be able to put your hands on and never catch, he will always walk in your head while you're sleeping. He always the trophy in the back of your mind. Strike. Oh, man. Man, what we got you? Nothing. You like bubbles? So where you saw bubbles at? Right here. This is dream catcher, right here. This is it. Hey, yes. It's a dream. Go. Oh. No. Come on, give me my shot, buddy. Oh. On Bayou Black. Frenchie and G are convinced they finally hooked their dream gator. It's the dream. Oh! Go. Come on, give me my shot, buddy. Trying to get you a shot, brother. Dream came true. Thank you, Lord. I think he's got three feet. He's a three-footer. That front leg missed you. They got a bigger gate out there to take his foot off like that. While this eight-footer will bring in over $200 at the buyer, Frenchie can tell by its size it's not his dream gator. But it doesn't stop him from giving it his special blessing. Frenchy think it was a winner, so he pulled out his salt and shaker and he went to shaking. So we're doing pretty good right now. Salt and pepper, the way to go. As Frenchy and G march on in search of the dream gator, in the marsh outside Homa, despite his infected finger, RJ is pushing through. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he got some energy in there. Tree singing, boy. Tree shaker, bro. 
Although he usually handles the line, RJ's infection is too painful, and the duo switch roles. You want to shoot him? Yeah, I'm going to shoot him. Come on, what we got over here? Oh, he's madly picking his tail up. Come on, man. Fight him, bro. Starting to slow down now. Here you go, here you go. What a shot. Good job, buddy. Thought you will. I tell you what, my fingers hurt right now, but I'm not gonna be a badass and say, oh man, he's gonna heal. Now, if I'd be younger, it'd be different. But I'm getting older now, so it takes a little bit longer for it to heal. To try to temporarily relieve some of the pain, RJ attempts to drain the swelling around the cut. Come on, let me sun do it. It hurts enough as it is. I know, that's why you're not doing it right. You know I watch Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, give me that. Pull it through. There you go. I got it, dude. Hey, who's the doctor here? Yeah, I know. OK, that's good, that's good. Yeah, that's good. No, no, I'll squeeze it. No, I'll squeeze it. With his finger getting worse, RJ decides to cut his hunting day short. I know our medicine man, he's probably got a solution. So I'll probably give him a call. Because you don't want to let that go too far. Let that go too far, it's too late then. I like my finger. Right now, I'm serious. I have to do something because uh, this could end my season. Seventy-five miles north, in Bayou Sorrel, Willie is on the hunt for the monster that stole his hook and line. No backing down on me. I mean, you know, once I get my hands on him, it's gonna be me or him. My dad taught me that if you start something, don't quit. I mean, you got to keep going and don't give up. As he makes his way up the canal, he finds fresh signs of a huge gator. A gator slide where they come overboard and making a big old trail. Willie knows that getting out on the bank is a risky move. Let's go all back here, see if we can't find this big old thing. He might be laying in a little bitty old hole. If I'm getting out on the bank to walk down through the woods and go looking for an alligator in a hole, I'm bringing my gun with me. You got all kind of stuff that attack you. You got to watch what you're doing. An alligator, he can lunge more probably right at 25 mile an hour, like a straight lunge at about 30, 40 feet. Whoa, 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 cotton off right there. One bite you, you ain't making it back out of here. Yeah, when I was uh, eight years old, I got bit by a copperhead. Hit me in the thumb. And uh, I like to die. It was, it was a close call. It was bad. It took me uh, three weeks in the hospital. Now I got poor circulation in these hands, and I don't have no sweat glands. And they'll shed just like a snake, I can pull the skin off. That thing right there is deadly poison. Especially this time of the year, hot as it is, he got his most venom. Yeah, I see water right there. This alligator, that's where it goes out and he hits the water right there. That thing might go another 20 miles back there. I'm going to head on out and get back in the boat. He's back there still. He's just got so many lilies and stuff in the hole, you can't see him. He just disappeared like a needle in a haystack. I got to do something else, so I'm waiting to catch him in the bar. He's going to come back out and I'll kill him. There's no backing down and no ifs, ands, and buts. As Willie continues stalking his prey, 75 miles away on Lake Fossey Point, the Edgars have 146 tags left to fill. But right now, Daniel's in relentless pursuit of just one, the monster they call Grand Noir. We need to move on, and Dad's holding on to this alligator. I guess we're just following his lead on this one. If we get the alligator, it's worth it. That's an alligator. He's swimming towards the bank. I'm going to push him out in the middle. Let me get behind him. That's the big one. I'm a little worried about that trouble hooking this year because he's got an injury that uh, he, he got last year by hooking a big alligator, dislocated his shoulder. And I don't want him to you know, throw the hook on any alligators. But if he sees bubbles, he's going to throw the hook. He's not going to back up. I know this. I know this. 
that part through it. Who am I to tell my daddy what to do? Slow us down, Paul. Slow us down. Daniel wants to kill the boat engine and keep at a distance so they don't scare off the beast. Stop the boat, Paul. Stop it. Stop it. With the paddle. Don't use that it's too deep. It's not too deep for a paddle. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure it's too deep. Stop. Hold on. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Hold on. Dorian, you know, he's kind of got it figured out. You know, he says, Paul, I understand. But he doesn't really understand. OK, now be careful. Let it go all the way to the bottom, then. Now you have to hold on to it. He's still there. Hold on to him, then. Hold it, big son of a bitch. Hold it. Hold it. Oh. On Lake Fossey Point, the Edgars are closing in on their old nemesis, Grand Noir. He's still there. Hold on to him, Dan. Hold that big son of a bitch. Hold it. Pop. Oh. oh. Damn, he got off. He straightened the hook, I think. Son of a bitch. But the wily monster has outsmarted him. Put, put him, let's get him back on the hook. Straighten the hook out. And don't crowd him. Let him pull some of the slack. Straighten that hook up. I think he's right here. Damn. Hold on, I don't see his bubbles. Just put it down, put it down. Keep putting on top, on top, on top. I'm 46 years old, and he still got that mentality that I'm 12 years old. Hurry up, hurry up, Dad. I can hook him. Joey, he gets aggravated with me sometimes. I'm his dad. He's just going to have to get used to it. There he is. Look, he's right there. There he is. God, dog. You're not far enough to the right, to the left. Right, so he's right there. Let him take a little bit if you hook him. Hold him there. Let him take a little bit. Let him take a little bit. Get ready. Coming up. Pull on him, Dad. Pull on him. You got him hooked in the back foot, in the toe. You make his shot count, Paul. Shoot him. Nice. With the treble hook just barely snatching the beast by its claw, the boys got lucky. That's not the big one. That big one's still out there. And while this nine-footer will fetch over $250 at the buyer, it's not the one they were looking for. Ron Watt can eat this alligator. I'm telling you, he can eat that one. That's what they like for breakfast. Coming closer than ever before, Daniel will have to fight another day to catch the elusive monster known as Grand Noir. I lost track of him. He was just slicker than I was. And, uh, you know, I can't find him. I don't know where he's at. If you quit early, you're a loser. You can't quit. I mean, we just had to do everything possible where we could get him. 78 miles to the southeast, with an infected finger making it too painful to hunt, RJ's called upon the Homa tribe's local medicine man for treatment. Well, I was cutting my, uh, my bait, and it was some neutral. It stuck me, but then I would keep putting band-aids on and putting stuff on it, and it wasn't doing anything. That's poison. And that's, that's poison. poison. That's, that's poison. poison, yeah. Yeah. So that's why you don't want to heal it. Yeah. I trust him. I trust him 100% because he's a medicine man off our tribe. And the homegrown stuff that we have will heal it a lot faster than antibiotics. And uh, that I know for a fact because uh, he's good at what he does. This is nitrate. OK. So what I did, I took some of those leaves from here. OK. This is what I, I smashed into this. This is what we call the five leaf vine. Five leaf vine. vine. Okay. You see, this is also good if you have joint pain. This is also good for old cut and for something old like you got. Okay. And then you crush the leaves and you mix it all up with those other ones so you can use this for your finger. So what you do with this, you're going to pass that on your finger. OK, yeah. You just want to. You see? OK, now you put it like this uh -huh. and wrap it up. And that's going to take all the infection out. Okay. And that's, and that's going to heal it fast. OK. I have faith. And yeah, any, any, any medicine that you and do? And that's what 
yeah. faith in our creator. That's why he put that for us to heal us. With the medicine man's herbal mixture, RJ hopes his finger will heal quickly and he can get back out on the water. To us, it's not superstition, it's not this, it's not that. We believe. We do say our prayer and uh, thank the creator for sharing whatever he has to offer us. I tell you what, I feel it feels better already. It just to the part is like it's soothing it. 75 miles away in Bayou Sorrel, nine hours into his day, Willie is still tracking down the giant that ripped a treble hook line out of his bare hands. Usually when you call for them like that, they'll come out away from the bank, push out into the bar, and you can, you can see, call him away from the bank. Imitating the sound of a young gator in distress, Willie tries to coax the monster into the open. I'm telling you, this thing pulls so hard, and the trail of bubbles he had, I never seen one make a trail of bubbles that wide. This gator's big, and I ain't, I ain't forgot about him, and I'm gonna catch him. Alligator or not, I see something right there. He done got smart now. He knows what I'm driving, and when he hear me coming, he's that head right on down, squat down, don't make no bubbles or nothing. He knows what he's doing. So sometimes you need a good luck. Got a big one. That's him right here. Bayou Sorrel. Willie's in hot pursuit of the enormous beast that popped his line. Got a big one. He don't want to come up. He knows what's about to happen to him. He's not no monster. Eight and a half foot, nine foot. Man! We're gonna load him over in the boat. Once he's up, it's clear the gator is not the giant Willie's been stalking. But this nine-footer will bring over $250 at the buyer, making the total haul for the day $2,700. It's a disappointment. You know he's there, and you pumped up and wanting to get in the boat. Couldn't do nothing about it. I never seen his head, never seen how big he was. All I can go by is how hard he pulled and his bubble trail. This alligator, he got to be big. Maybe 14 foot. And I'm gonna kill him before the season's up. Meanwhile, over on Bayou Black. He said the fat lady ain't sung yet, huh? No. We're back in the dreamer territory right now. Frenchie's dream of catching his dream gator is still alive. The dream gator. It's still out there. You know, I can't just give up. He's like the big buck that got away, that you missed or just he didn't give you that shot. All right, look like you're lying down. Look like you're tangled up in some trees. 
That right, though. Let's see what our surprise is. Let's see what we got here. When you pull on the line, it feel like you pull on a tree. It don't move. It seems like the alligator is dead. That's a log. Come here, log. The Cajun log. Oh, yeah. The Cajun log, come here. I think we ran into a big one. Oh, yeah. As the massive beast begins to fight, it's obvious to Frenchie this could be his dream gator. Ah. Get ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Hit it. Hold on, man. His eyes still open. Hit him again. Yeah, watch your hand. Salt and pepper rolls again. Oh, yeah. That look like the dream of here. Here. Finally, we got Dream Gator right here. We got him. That look like a, a real trophy here. Frenchie's dream gator measures an impressive 12 feet 2 inches, bringing their total haul to over $2,500. Not a bad day's work. Dream gator definitely put one hell of a fight on, boys. He got some power. Yeah, he got power. You get the whole 100% turbo. <laughs> <laughs> so this the dream one? This is the dream one right here. It was our dream and his nightmare. <laughs> 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 On the next episode of Swamp People. Get him. Oh, my God. If it was a monster, I'd be having three heart attacks right now. We had him. What time did you go to bed? I don't want to discuss that. Where'd this come from? I can't figure that out. Somebody had a line there right next to ours that didn't belong there. You can see it's cleanly cut. OK, well, we're going to put a camera. If I catch him, it ain't going to be pretty. I can tell you that. I've been fishing alligators for 20 some years. It takes a big one to pull the rope out of my hand. Oh, boy. Oh. It ain't over with by a long shot.